Betty Baxter's the name, and boy do I have another tale for you. Back in the 1920s, the vaudeville era was in full swing here in New Orleans. There were all kinds of shows taking place all over the city. Magicians, dancers, singers, every type of show you could imagine. You could find it here in the Big Easy. And Peter, well, he wanted a piece of the action. He and his lovely bride, Mary, they were two of the best puppeteers in all the world. The masters of marionettes, they used to call them. Only problem was, Vaudeville didn't find much use for puppeteers, preferring more adult forms of entertainment, if you will. They were just seen kind of childish, if you will. Well, not content on doing children's shows forever, they came up with a brilliant idea. Using their mastery of engineering, they developed rigs where they could manage humans like puppets. And at first, they were going to use live human actors. Kind of a novel thing, if you will. Team up with some local artisans and create a new kind of theater. But humans, <laughs> they're a problematic bunch. You see, one of the actors started interjecting just a little too much and trying to take over some of the creative control away from Peter. And Peter, he wasn't going to have none of that. After an argument right before he was slated to go before a promoter, Peter snapped and grabbed the screwdriver and stabbed him in the neck. <laughs> Mary was frightened, but grabbed a knife and kept the other actor at bay. And then they tortured over what to do, both with the body in their garage and the hostage in their home. It was then Peter hit upon his master stroke. Humans were only a problem when they were alive. Peter took the life of the other hostage and then started turning the dead bodies in the marionettes. They were the perfect puppets, able to be used in a new novel kind of act that Baldville had never seen. And they were the head of the town, touring all over the city, all over the region, even partying it up, earning the money, and enjoying the 1920s flapper lifestyle to its fullest. But that was a problem. Corpses, you see, they tend to fade over time. And well, Peter needed a new supply of cadavers to keep his operation going and to keep staffing his new productions. At first he turned to the county coroner, a corrupt old drunkard that was ripe for his kind of abuse. But eventually he wanted to take a little more creative control and he started seeking out new victims, if you will, choosing his cast firsthand. Well, Mary, well, she didn't like that all that much. She started slipping away just a little bit, not helping as much, and just barely communicating enough to do the shows. And one day when she went out to the garage to see what Peter was up to, well, he had brought home a little five-year-old girl and had her on the workbench getting ready to make a nice puppet out of her. Mary, she couldn't take it anymore. She grabbed that knife that she'd held the other actor at bay with and then proceeded to stab Peter viciously, attacking him to defend the girl. That little girl, though, had no clue what was going on, grabbed a mallet from the workbench and struck Mary in the hip. Mary, out of reflex, jerked around and slit her throat. Oh, it was a grisly sight, and when Mary realized what she had done, she collapsed onto the floor in anguish and grief. She walked, walked over a mile to the nearest police station and turned herself in, but the police, they didn't believe Mary's tale. They thought she'd been behind it all, that she was the mastermind. So, when the time was right, she struck back, attacking the police officer that was watching her, and she fled into the streets, into the midst of the city, where she was never seen again. Well, that is, other than the occasional sighting people believed to be Mary, whatever you make of that. But a lot of time has passed. 
But I got good news for you folks. Peter is back and he's bringing Mary with him. The couple has reconciled. And they're coming back for three nights only. The 26th, 27th, and 3rd at 1st of October, 2012. So come one and come all to Bird and Baxter's Traveling Side Show. And maybe, just maybe, you can meet Peter and avoid being his next puppet experiment. <laughs>